Hey, what's going on? My name is Jacob. My name is Dave, and we play the band Headley. We just wanted to say what's up, and we're live in limbo. Yep. So just pick up the phone and say hello. It's Katrina, and I'm here with Jacob and Dave from Headley. How's it going? Just decent. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so your new album comes out on Friday, yes, titled it "Hello." It's so soon. <laughs> um, have you got how many different languages can you guys say hello in? Good question. Here we go. Hola. Uh, 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 oh, sorry. Uh, Ka- Konnichiwa. Ciao. Konnichiwa. Yeah, yeah. Five. Uh, uh, sa- nam- namaste. Namaste. Uh, good day. That's uh, hello uh, in Australian. Australian. Aloha. Aloha. Um, uh, buenos oh. dias. Shalom. Shalom. That's ten. Oh, ning hao. Yeah, ni hao. That's eleven. Um, okay, I think that's all. Oh, all do we say hello yeah, English? No, there are twelve. <laughs> there you go. Wow, that's quite a bit. I can't go past hello and bonjour. Right. <laughs> <laughs> do we say bonjour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, yeah, we got, right. you got that. Jacob that was got too. You covered. <laughs> all right. Um, right? <laughs> 12. That's decent. That's pretty, that's pretty good. We thought about this. Right. Um, your last album, Wildlife, you guys did a lot of really cool experimenting on the album. Like, no two songs sounded the same, but it flowed, like, pretty good. Um, what can we expect this time around? Well, nothing different, but everything different, I guess, because that's sort of a thing that we've always really prided ourselves on is, is making sure that we don't ever repeat ourselves. I think if we were to ever start, like, making the same kind of sounding music we would just like i don't know what would happen we would kind of like fall apart i think because pushing ourselves is a part of being musicians and 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 it, our motto is evolve or die so it's music music's changing our, our fans are growing up we're growing up and so as individuals as, mu- as creative individuals it's so important for us to continue to push ourselves so this album you can expect nothing l- less because in the same respect we continue to broaden our musical horizons while always sort of staying true to that, like, I guess that Headley sound, which is ultimately just like us singing on the music that we've made. So in a lot of ways, we've continued to kind of take those same chances because those are those risks that I feel help us grow. That's awesome. And speaking of growing, you also did, um, you directed the Hello video. Yes. So how is that being on the other side of... Um... It's nice to be able to yell at Dave for different reasons. <laughs> Get up! <laughs> no, it was it was a killer, and um, you know, working with the the, the two um, actors that we had, who were incredible, was a real challenge. Just because it was a super outside of the box thing for me to do, and it was you know the the video and the concept for me is really personal. It's based on a, a, my own kind of personal story, which is why it was so. I felt important for me to just kind of be in that creative position as well to make sure that it kind of flowed that way. And this is the second video that I've co-directed now with a really good friend of mine. His name's Matt Leaf. We've been creative collaborators now for a number of years working on all kinds of projects. So directing videos has been a real natural progression for us and something that we love doing because for us as a band, music videos have always been such a huge part of what we do. It's like such an additional element to the story, to what we're kind of expressing. So... By the way, Mr. Director, if uh, you ever want to work with kids again, please don't, because they really just steal my thunder on yeah. set, man. Boy, they really <laughs> man, they us. were awesome. <laughs> Such great actors we had. Right, um, I can't believe it's been 10 years since you released your debut album. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, as veterans in the music scene, what's some advice you can give to emerging artists? Sleep. <laughs> nobody ever died from too much sleep. <laughs> And, and trust nobody, literally trust nobody, except your, except your bros. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all you got. So Dave has your back. Yeah, he's got my back, he's got Always my butt. Always, you know, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's appropriate still, right? I remember the first time that I saw you guys, um, you were opening for Simple Plan at the ACC, and yes. now you guys have wow. headlined and you've sold it out multiple times. So what has been one of your most memorable moments thus far as a band? Man, that's a really good question. You know, it's it's funny. We look back on such a fun career of playing so many cool places, whether it's the, the middle of, of like t- the big square in London for the Olympics or, um, you know, the closing ceremonies of the Olympics in Vancouver at BC Place and, and playing some of these monstrous gigs but i think our best memories will always be those those quiet moments yeah. in a van in a small little humble vehicle yep. traveling from some venue to yep. some hotel or whatever it is where we are all four of us just laughing uncontrollably you know those moments it's yeah. so funny 
when we're on stage in front of thousands of people for a television show or whatever it is, those moments go by so lightning fast, it really does remind you that it's almost not as much about that performance as it was about the journey getting there. The yep. time you spent rehearsing, traveling to the show, bumping into people that you've met before along the way, friends making new ones, remembering old ones. And really, as corny as it sounds, it's about the time you spent. It's about that journey getting to where you're going. It's not about what you're doing there because that's like the quickest, most like vapid part of it all, which is sort of kind of cool in a way because it enforces the fact that those relationships you make along the way are the important parts. Yeah. And it's always pretty awesome after all that traveling and arduous journey. Sometimes when somebody comes and says, hey, you were my first show, you know, yeah. that's pretty special to be someone's first like that. Or when they're like, hey, this is your child. And you're like, oh, oh, rice. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. That's always happened. surprises like that. It's always surprising. Every time. Every time. Um, speaking of quiet moments on tour, you guys also did the quietest show ever. In yes. Bam. So how was that? And what was the experience like? Because it must have been kind of weird. Like, That's having... so cool you bring that up. I, I, not that I forgot, but that was... <laughs> What a what a wild experience! So we love the, you know the outdoors and, and 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 Banff National Park. It's one of the most incredible national parks we have in Canada. It's absolutely beautiful. The mountains and the, and the scenery is unbelievable. So we were to paint the picture. We were playing at night, underneath the stars on a clear night, and the quietest concert ever was basically um, about three thousand contest winners that all had headphones on, so they could hear everything we were playing. But there were no speakers, no sub monitors, no side fields, no nothing. So there was. So the entire concert was played only through these headphones. So if you were outside looking, you saw four guys on stage going crazy, making no noise, and 3,000 people in the crowd going nuts, but you couldn't hear a thing they were singing. And then at one point... We played a song they knew. We played a song they knew. <laughs> and because we actually, for that, for that concert, we played our brand new album front to back for the first time ever. So it was a lot of songs they'd never heard before, but we played a hit for them, an older song that they knew. And we kind of stopped and stepped back. <laughs> And it was like a real beautiful moment because it was like 3,000 people in the middle of the beautiful mountains under the stars singing our lyrics like as a group with just no music playing, just a cappella. Yeah, the loudest thing around. It was one of the most like spectacular life moments just, just for that simple like simple moment. That's amazing. And then you just got to intake it. You got to cool. live the you moment instead of like... And it's a tough thing to do sometimes to remind yourselves yeah. to just like be present because... These things happen so quickly, like we were saying. Those, yeah. like, those shows you play are quick. A, a lot of times when we're on stage and we'll like we'll step off stage near the end of a show and you know the crowd will be cheering or something and it'll be dark and we'll be kind of just hanging out backstage. I'll often just like take a second by myself to be like, This is what you do. It's like it's and you're and you're here right now. Yeah. And yeah. to just like remind ourselves to be present because that like ability to be in the moment helps us make sure that we're giving everything that we have back to the audience that's been so incredible to us speaking of like headley fans i noticed that your fans they do a lot of really cool things like They're you guys insane. have the headley ambassadors so yeah. they like they do they decorate their homes for like halloween and it's all yeah. like headley related yeah. or like How their do... parents cars without permission very <laughs> tom green style it's insane they do the most hilarious things that's cool how do you guys come up with the contests that you do for those oh or... that's just a lot of like menacing time we spend thinking of how we can piss off people's parents yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the most but we love kind of like pushing them too because we know that a lot of headley ambassadors kind of have the same sort of twisted sense of humor that we do so we love to kind of give them the ideas that kind of push them into the direction where they get to do something really kind of wild and out of the blue and that's just the kind of thing we love to do yeah. too and it's why we're so close with our fans like that because we know that those are the same kind of characters that we have they have the same sense of humor we have you're all sick chips that have kind of sustained <laughs> what we do now like those those fans to us are like the most yep. important part of what we do and we'd be kidding ourselves if we thought that we were here for any other reason but our fans yeah. So, wh what would be the like cra craziest moment that you've had with a fan, or like a craziest encounter Man, that you can remember? <laughs> I remember these fans like dressed up <laughs> as the like oh, yeah. cooking staff, like at the venue, like the catering staff. Really? And like, yeah, and like found their way into our dressing room, and then oh. just kind of and then didn't leave. They were just kind of they just kind of hung out. Oh, we're having nice. a bad meeting, chat. It was yeah, like yeah. out of like uh, a like Sherlock weird like or Inspector Gadget or something. They just like. We're wearing the cooking clothes, uh. <laughs> the catering clothes, and just we're hanging out. We're like, can we help you guys? They just like, fidgeted with the ice and the drinks a little bit. That, like crazy glint in their eyes. And I was like, calling out on. Hey, hold on. That's always crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is you guys do a lot of work with free our children. Um, so what was the experience like going to um, Kenya and Ecuador? How was that? How did that affect you guys? Man, the, we always refer to those as turning points because those are those moments where you sort of realize what you're up against. And, and we got involved with Free the Children in an organization like Free the Children because we got to a point in our careers where we realized that we have the ability to sort of like affect someone's opinion and at least inspire people. And when you realize that you have that ability, you want to do something really positive with it. And Free the Children for us was that ideal organization where they were doing the same thing we wanted to do and they were empowering kids to make a difference. They weren't an organization of a bunch of old people in suits having martini fundraisers. They were going, hey, you're the next generation that needs to do something about it. This is what you can do, and this is how you should do it. And that's, for us, exactly what we wanted to get behind. So going to a place like India and, and talking to kids that were 12, 13 years old that didn't know how old they were. They didn't know their own birthdays. They were like 15 girls, and they were digging a ditch. They were like child laborers. Oh my gosh. And, and realizing that we, we got to hang out with them and then we had to say goodbye and like get in an air conditioned vehicle and like drink a Coca Cola and drive away. And it kind of set in for me personally that poverty isn't something you can just flick a switch on. Maybe we could have like, what, like, it, like grabbed those girls and like tried to like remove them from that situation, but it wouldn't solve the problem. And that's when we realized sort of what us as human beings are up against as far as facing global issues like like hunger and education and child labor that they still exist and so for us for the children was that 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 moment that movement that we wanted to become a part of and help create the momentum that exists now that you see on we days where you see 20,000 kids in a room going yeah if we do this together we can completely make a difference and that for us was just a tipping point that's amazing it's always good to see artists like yourselves doing some like great stuff to inspire other kids and like we get inspired by the people that are starting those groups in their schools so yeah and it's they're uh, yeah, doing again, it for us. like for us to have opportunity to give something back in a positive way there's no way we couldn't take advantage of that because we're just really privileged to do what we do every yeah. day we wake up it's like we get to play music for living with our bros and travel around but most importantly we get to engage with our fans and those people that have like supported us throughout the years and that's like what a blessing so on top of that for for us any chance we have to be able to give back is is super important on a human level that's good and um just to wrap things up um on your previous tours you've taken us through shipwrecks um you've taken us into the forest so yeah. what can we expect what kind of hints can you give us for this coming um, we, we, hello we can't tour too much away here we, we're keeping this one pretty close to our chest but uh, you know, we, we Carly Rae Jepsen is coming out with us. This is a huge lineup. This, this is like massive lineup of a tour we've had in, in a really long time. So we're excited, not just for the billing, but yeah. how we're going to be able to like incorporate each other's yeah. shows oh, together. That's pretty cool. And yes. even and even when you're going for pre-sale too, we're making sure you guys get as close to the stage as possible. We're getting as close to you as possible. Yeah, we've also started this new VIP package where, yep. and we only started these VIP packages because we got to a point. When we would tour, where we could no longer like hang out after the show and say hi to everybody at the show. So, so, so to kind of like continue doing that, the VIP packages were a way for us to continue that like manifestation of us being able to be that close to our fans. And so this time around, we've incorporated this acoustic show that we're starting to do oh, wow. before the show. Only like exclusive songs that no one's heard, acoustic versions of songs that we've never played before. That we just digging out some old jams. Like, yeah. Give more of ourselves back in that situation. So. There's going to be so many elements of this tour that we've never experienced before that no one's ever experienced before. So we're just excited to begin to put it together now. And you guys have no idea what's in store. That's exciting. It sounds like it's going to be a wild ride. It's going to be insane. <laughs> and tickets are going really fast. So for those of you at home that haven't had a chance to pick it up, I recommend you do because you don't want to miss it because we don't want to miss we it. We want to see you. Great. Thank you so much for your time. I Merci really beaucoup. appreciate it. Thank you. Live in limbo. Cheers, Dave. You're great. Hey. Hey, way to go, Jake. <laughs> way to go. Thank you so Thank much. You. It's good to be